All right, so once again, thank you all for being here and welcome. I hope you enjoyed this. We'll be talking about Electrum Wallet, Server, and Bitcoin Core. Uh, as usual, I'm just going to repeat the rules. So we're going to have around 45 minutes of presentation, maybe a little bit less. Uh, it's quite technical, uh, although it's not only for developers. You still require some uh, command line skills if you want to do the, the things that I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, and then we're going to have a period of questions at the end, probably around 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever long it takes for you folks to ask your questions, uh, give your comments, give your opinions, whatever you, you want to do, it's, it will be your time later on. So if you just please keep it quiet during the presentation, uh, else we'll have to mute you uh, so that there's no sounds uh, and distractions. Thank you. So, and server plus Bitcoin Core workshop. Uh, so as usual, this is sponsored by Verify, my firm, and Bull Bitcoin. So presentation plan will go through first of all what's Bitcoin self custody. Just a fresh reminder, and then we're going to talk about how to choose a, effectively a Bitcoin wallet, uh, how why Electrum Wallet is our choice, and the one that I've decided to to show today. I'm going to show it. Uh, then I'm going to talk about what running a node means very briefly because I'm going to present Bitcoin Core and Electrum Server, which are the server side components to the setup that we're going to demonstrate. So this is something that we've been doing with uh, a lot of our clients, either small level businesses or investment funds or individual investors, and they've held up to millions of dollars uh, regarding this technique. However, uh, this usually requires some extra hardware tools, like some hardware wallets, like a dedicated Bitcoin node. So I'll still present all the software part uh, that you, you could get, you could you should do to get there. But uh, there's a lot of hardware components that I won't have uh, the time to, to, to go through today. Maybe another time. So first of all, for those who don't know me, I'm Gustavo Flores Echez. I'm a head of product and research at Verify. I'm also a developer in JavaScript and React. Uh, I'm very passionate about Bitcoin and I'm a firm believer in free markets. Plus, I'm a secure Bitcoin custody consultant. So like I said before, uh, I'm usually in charge of uh, setting up uh, the, the secure Bitcoin custody for, for, for the companies and, and the customers that we have. And uh, a lot of my, uh, uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm getting the impression that I didn't share my screen. So uh, let me just get on that uh, in one second. Sorry for that. Okay, now you should see my screen. Now you should see my screen. Okay. So, thank God that I didn't get uh, so far in the presentation before noticing. So, like I was saying, uh, uh, we do a lot of Bitcoin consultancy in regard of uh, secure custody, and we have other services as well. So, uh, either you're a company in Bitcoin or in a company outside Bitcoin, uh, you want to get a better idea how you can leverage Bitcoin to develop a product, to include it as a form of payment, uh, as, a, as an investment, or you just want, you're just an individual who wants to hold some Bitcoin, first buy some Bitcoin, we provide that service. We have a special announcement or um, service this month that we've launched. It's a web brokerage service where folks can buy Bitcoin uh, directly from us. So just uh, hit me up or anybody from my team and we can send you a link so that you can start playing with that uh, new product that we've launched. But if you also ju just want to get into Bitcoin, maybe you want to get a Bitcoin job in a company, we can help you do that uh, with some seminars we're preparing and some additional courses eventually. So first of all, uh, just a quick reminder, Bitcoin is censorship resistant money with limited supply, 21 million. So here's everything you need to know about Bitcoin. It's it's censorship resistant because you can do a transaction and nobody can stop you. And also there's only 21 million. So if you hold one today and 100 years passes by and Bitcoin is still working, well, you can still be sure that it's going to be 101 out of 21 million. You can't say the same about uh, physical cash or government currency. And when it comes to censorship resistance, you can't say the same because nobody can stop you when you're just giving a physical $5 to a merchant. However, when you're making electronic transactions with fiat currency, either Canadian dollars or US dollars or other currencies, well, their censorship becomes a real issue. I've seen many cases of people just not being able to buy Bitcoin with their bank because the bank doesn't like it. 
so they just block what you can do with your money, right? And we've seen many cases of this. WikiLeaks, nowadays SciHub. If you want to be a little bit uh, um, rebel or just uh, you're, you're challenging the current powers to be either the government or some big business, well, usually you get attacked. Huh? They just cut your MasterCard service and your PayPal service, and then you get censored. But if you have Bitcoin, you can survive. So first of all, self-custody. I'm going to go through some very important principles. This is basically what you got to understand very briefly to know that your setup is, is uh, appropriate and that it, that it fulfills the, the need of self-custody uh, adequately. So first of all, note your keys and not your coins uh, as the most important principle out of them all in terms of self-custody. What that means is that if you have your coins on an exchange or you have them on a custodian or you have a friend of yours has it, well, you don't have Bitcoin. You have uh, no a right to Bitcoin that somebody else can give you, but that person can easily default. And then a lot of people will say, yeah, but there's the law and the law and the law. Sure, there's always the law that you can leverage, try to bring, get those Bitcoins back. They're your property, but uh, why, uh, why reside on that? Why not take matter into your hands? So Bitcoin is all about taking matter into your hands, not uh, accepting financial responsibility. You lose your coins, uh, it's your fault. It's nobody else's fault. So you lose your coins, there's no going back. So Bitcoin is all about that. So that comes the second principle is protect your keys securely. Since you have your coins, is is it's as if you have uh, a brick of gold and you, under your mattress. You got to protect it safely because nobody else is there to protect it. And if somebody steals your piece of gold, well, there's no going back. So protecting your keys securely is very important. Harder wallets, using the right wallet, distribution. There's many methods. Uh, that, that we can talk about and that we've done presentations in the past. So if you go on our YouTube, Bitcoin Montreal on YouTube, you'll find presentations on these kinds of subjects precisely. So then goes, validate the authenticity of your Bitcoin. If you're receiving Bitcoin from someone else or if you're receiving a Canadian dollar from someone else, don't you want to make sure it's a, it's a real Bitcoin or a real Canadian dollar? I'm pretty sure you do it often when you receive a, a, a bill and, and you're not sure, you, you make sure it is, right? And Companies do it, banks do it. So why not do the same with your Bitcoin? There's only one way and it's called running your own node. And I'm gonna present what that means later. So protecting your privacy from third parties, we've, we talk about this in the news nowadays all the time, right? Uh, Desjardins got the head sack and 500 million people, I don't know, a couple million, get all their data is now exposed, maybe on the dark web, getting sold by the millions, right? So in Bitcoin, the, the principle is still important because there's data around how much Bitcoins you have linked to your IP address, sometimes linked to your own identity when you're buying Bitcoin and you're doing KYC, know your customer. So it's important to, to be able to protect your privacy from third parties the most you can. And running your own node and your own Electrum server in this specific situation really helps to achieve that. Finally, setting up a recovery scheme for loss or inheritance. I won't have time to go into that, but as I said, you can go on our YouTube channel or our, our blog and you'll find more information on that. So choosing a wallet. So choosing a wallet is uh, important to look for a couple requirements. Uh, first of all, what your wallets will be for. It's gonna be a software tool to receive, manage and send your Bitcoin security, right? Sure you have hardware wallets and you should use them, but you will always need a software component, a uh, graphic user interface so that you can manage uh, your, your, your Bitcoin wealth appropriately. So what do you have to look for when it comes to choosing a wallet? You got to look for open source wallets, constant updates. You don't want a new bug introduced and the developers not reacting quick enough, right? Uh, you want it to be hardware wallet compatible so that if your keys are, uh, if your computer gets hacked, well, you don't lose your Bitcoin, right? Because they're in different hardware components. Multi-signature is a great way to distribute keys geographically and it's also a great way to create recovery schemes for loss or for inheritance. Tor is a core component that you will need if you want some privacy and so that you don't expose your IP address to the whole world, basically your ge geographical location. And node connection means, like I said before and I will say more often today and as I always say, it just means 
how to validate that the coins you receive are authentic and are real. So we have done a, a wallet comparison table that you might have seen before. So here it is. We compared all wallets with more than 50, I think, uh, uh, criteria. And you see Electrum here is highly ranked and it's highly recommended by us since it has many features. So what does Electrum offer and which features uh, you, should, you can leverage using it? So first of all, it has every feature mentioned earlier. It has compatibility with all the major hardware wallets. You can use it with Ledger, with Trezor, with Cold Card. You can do multi-signature schemes of uh, 15 cold cards and you have each cold card in a different city. I don't know if you really want to go over the top, you can do it. You can also do just uh, two or three, right? You have a desktop version, which is the one I recommend because the mobile one is very incomplete and it only offers like a very simple experience, which is not bad, but we're talking about securing big amounts here uh, at least, right? Uh, at, at best, I mean. So, full Lightning Wallet, uh, because they've introduced that in the latest version, uh, it means that you can make complete Lightning Wallet transactions uh, with Electrum, you can receive on Lightning, and Lightning just means Bitcoin, but instantly, okay? I, I made another presentation on that last week. You can also watch it on YouTube. So, it's fully written in Python, Electrum, uh, which is a very secure programming language. And you have, uh, we have full mnemonic backups. So if you're not using hardware wallets and you're using the Electrum hot wallet, which is the one that stays on your computer, you can just back up with 12 words like many major wallets, right? So then uh, I already said this about hardware wallets, but finally SegWit, RBF, fee selection, batching, PSBT, coin control are all supported in Electrum. And I'm not gonna go into detail of all of these, but basically, these are techniques to save on fees and to have more efficient uh, Bitcoin transactions and to have a better privacy management of your Bitcoin. Uh, that's precisely what coin control is. So I'm going to do a demo. This is a, a meme, by the way. This Well, it's a meme, but at the same time, it's kind of the reality uh, I have uh, and my perception I have on Bitcoin and many have. Right? Uh, I'm not going to spend my Bitcoin now. I'm just holding so or huddling, as we say. So here you have an Electrum wallet. Um, first of all, you can go on electrum.org to download it. Uh, excuse me, electrum.org to download it. And here you'll find that it's only the 3.38 version that's available. Uh, however, if you go on their Twitter, you'll find a link to the latest version that's currently being tested, uh, which is uh, 4.0. And it's in beta, so I only recommend it to advanced users. But um, for now, you can stick with 3.338, which is good enough. Uh, and you can also go on their GitHub and build it from source. Uh, you can also verify their signatures. There's some, um, there's some links here so that you can verify the GPG signatures appropriately. This just means for those who don't know that you will make sure that the software you're downloading is the one that was written by the developers you trust, right? That there was no interception, nobody took over this website without you, uh, without, uh, you noticing and you've downloaded a, a, a malware version. So it's, very, it's important to do this and uh, you, can, you have it on many versions here, Linux, Windows, you have the installer or just the executable. Uh, so I have it already here, and I'm on Linux, by the way. Uh, so I won't show how the installation is because it's pretty straightforward and also because it depends on your platform, and I guess not many of you are on Linux. Uh, but when it comes to the Electrum server, I will demonstrate how to install it. So here I'm just going to do a new wallet. So you go here and you just, this is how you, when you open it for the first time, this is what you will see. So this wallet file does not exist. So you do next. You can name it how you want, right? So here you select. It's either you want a standard wallet, which just means it's going to be a key and it's going to be just on your computer and that's it. Or maybe you want a multi-sig. Maybe you want to do one with an external party. I don't recommend this uh, two-factor authentication because you're using like a, a third party to sign your transactions. But multi-sig is very useful. Uh, but I'm, I, I'm not going to go through multi-sig uh, a lot today. 
and you can also import Bitcoin addresses or private keys. So, well, I'm just going to show quickly what multisig is. So, multisig here, you can select. Uh, let's say I want to, we're four business, five business partners in my in my team, and we say, okay, we have to have uh, three out of five uh, to sign a Bitcoin transaction so that it's valid, right? So that we all have a key. Let's say all have a hardware wallet, and it requires three out of five to to pass the transactions through. So we can, we, we just put in that and we could click all use a hard work device. And if we have our call cards connected or uh, if we have our treasures connected, well, it will just detect them and you will just have to press the buttons and say, okay, I accept to share my public key uh, with this Electrum wallet so that it can watch the funds. It cannot sign the funds and move trans funds out of the wallet but it can receive funds and make sure and and watch if there's transactions around also put just a master key or a seed if you want to have it hot uh but let's we're not doing a multi-sig today so i'm just doing a standard um, and then i click on create a new seed i could also just enter a master key so that it's a watch only wallet and you'll see what's a master key in a second and i can also do a hardware device hardware wallet single sig uh, electrum wallet right so i'm just going to create a new, new wallet segwit and here are the words if you can read them i don't care because i'm never putting funds in there so uh, i just have to retype them so here you have the option to add extra words so let's say i want to have uh, uh, custom words added by extendency i could do it just by selecting this and adding them uh, directly here i think uh, no, it's 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 later that I can add them. Well, I'm not gonna do that, but just so you know, you can always add extra information. If let's say you don't trust um, the or you partially trust the random generator embedded in the Electrum software, and you fit, you have another one, so you want to use both, or you you want to throw some dice like 50 times and just uh, select a number each time and add the number. Uh, 50 times well you, you can do that as well so it's uh, it's really up to you so here when you have your seed obviously uh, you just follow this do not store it electronically so what I'm doing here is not supposed to be done I'm just doing it for the purpose of simplification and I will never type it on the website obviously and just never send this to anyone right because this is your key and in this case this is your bitcoins so you do next you type it down Okay, it shouldn't be too long. And you see what's cool about Electrum is that it detects the word you're going to write. So I don't even have to complete it. I can just write the first four letters and that's it. It detects it. And Okay, so you can put a password. I'm not going to put a password here. So this just means that if someone goes on your computer and there's no password, and if they click on Electrum, well, they'll just be able to access your wallet and your coins directly, right? If it's a watch only wallet, it's not a problem because you don't, you, you cannot move the funds out of there. Well, it's a privacy problem, but it's someone still has to have physical access to your device. But in this case, since it's just a demo, I'm not going to put a password, but it's, it's usually recommended to put a password. So here I have uh, the Electrum wallet. I'm going to put it in full screen, maybe a little bit less. Uh, like that. Okay. So here I could directly receive some funds. And as you see, it says on chain because this is a lightning wallet too. But we're going to just take all chain. Uh, and here I just have the QR code and I could just send some funds to it right now. Uh, or I have the address right here. And here are all my addresses so that I can, and I can also put a label say like uh, this one is from my purchase of April. Uh, things like that, right? This is what I like about Electrum. It allows you to really manage your coins uh, because you can also manage the coins. So if I can, I can manage by address, but I can have many coins in an address. And a coin doesn't mean one Bitcoin. It just means uh, like a, uh, an, an amount, a UTXO, uh, and a spend transaction output. So let's say I receive 0.1 Bitcoin. Well, 0.1 Bitcoin is going to be one coin. Let's say I receive three times 0.1 Bitcoin. Well, there's going to be three coins of 0.1. So Bitcoin works like that. It's like you have coins in your 
in your pocket and you have one dollar two dollar five dollar right so and then when you send well it's quite simple as well i'm pretty sure you all got you're all familiar with this how to send to an address an amount uh with with electron wallet so here you go in information you can get your public key so let's say you just want to create a, a wallet uh, and you just want to delete everything but you still want to watch it later uh, on a, but not be able to spend from watching so that you have either uh, an electron wallet that you can always check what your balance is but if someone gets on your computer well they cannot spend your funds and steal them so you could just take this xpub and earlier when i was creating the wallet I would have just inserted this instead of creating a new seed. I would have just gone into insert a public key. So this could have been done here. I could have, I could enable lightning. Uh, and yes, lightning has been analyzed. So while it will be closed. And once I turn it on again, lightning is now enabled in this wallet. So if I receive some funds, I can go into uh, lightning and i can uh, well now i cannot receive in lightning because to receive funds on lightning you have to have funds locked uh, so i would have to receive them on chain first create a lightning channel and then i would have to um, look here's channels and then i would have to uh, be able to receive or send funds online so here you can open a channel it's quite straightforward right with who you want to open the channel uh, you can find uh, IDs here. You can just click on suggest, or you can find them on uh, websites like oneml.com, where the, all the big nodes of Lightning are listed, or or small ones too, and just mark the amount and, and that's it. But I'm not going to do that today. So this was pretty much Lightning Wallet, uh, Electron Wallet. Maybe just show you the preference that you can do. There's a lot of settings uh, in, in in Electron. This is what I like. You can uh, enable RBF or remove it. You can batch transactions. Um, you can, there's some lightning settings as well. So you can use a watchtower. Basically just means that uh, you can run a server that makes sure nobody's trying to steal funds from you on lightning. Uh, lightning has this weird mechanism where you have to be online all the time to make sure nobody's trying to cheat on you. Uh, so this you can do with a watchtower. Uh, so there's many things. You can also link a uh, uh, block explorer. Let's say you're running your own block explorer at home. You can just put, uh, you can just insert it too. You can put one on four. It just means that when I click on a transaction and I click view on uh, explorer, it would redirect me to that explorer. What's important here is to look at network. So you see here, I'm connected to a node, obviously, as in all Bitcoin wallets. And here it's this is just this just means that the node is running on my own computer uh, this address one two seven dot zero dot two dot one it means this is running on my local computer so i have a node i have an electron server so obviously this is working but by default uh this would just go on a public server so uh this it wouldn't be this it would be just a random server that's here on the list somewhere here right uh but this is not the case today uh, because I'm going to show you how to do it properly. But if you just download the app and you haven't set up a server, it will just connect to a public server uh, by default. And there's, like I said, there's some issues of privacy, of authenticity of coins, and of uh, censorship resistant, which I'll go there in one second. So that's pretty much it for Lightning, uh, for Electrum for the moment. So let's go back to the presentation. And so running a node, that's uh, like, like I just said, like I just mentioned, there's three core reasons to run a node. The first one and the main one is to verify the authenticity of the coins you receive. So it's possible in Bitcoin to get scammed into believing you have received Bitcoin, but you haven't actually. So let's say I, I go and I sell a car for like uh, two Bitcoins and I'm a malicious actor who wants to... Uh, I basically don't want to, uh, excuse me, it's the other way around. I want to pay Bitcoins, but uh, I, no, excuse me. Like, like I said, I was receiving Bitcoins. Uh, I'm selling my car for two Bitcoins. And the person that's buying it for me is a malicious person. So they would come to me. They'd say, hey, I have to, these two Bitcoins. Let's make the transaction. They'd send it to me and I check on my wallet and it says it's confirmed. 
the transaction is confirmed. And I'm like, okay, thank you. It's confirmed. I have received the two Bitcoins, the, around $20,000. Here are the keys on my car. Go. So the person goes. Transaction is completed in real life. I'm happy because I see it's confirmed in, in the Bitcoin blockchain as well. However, half an hour later, I check and the coins aren't there anymore. Because when I got a confirmation it, that it was included in a block, it ultimately got the block got reversed because something wasn't right about the block. However, if let's say I was connected to a company like uh, BTC.com or Blockchain.com or Coinbase, uh, I was connected to their node. Well, they don't they don't uh, have a fully updated uh, node that has all the per the rules that I I care about. Maybe they have some old outdated version that doesn't validate some new properties that it should validate, uh, like eventually Schnorr. And that makes that it looks like I've received the Bitcoins and for 20, 30 minutes, it seems like it is, but ultimately doesn't, uh, it doesn't happen ultimately because there was some issue of rules or validation or there, there's many situations where you can find yourself into this. So running a node just solves that when you're looking at the Bitcoins, when you're looking at a block, when you're looking at a transaction, and it says it's valid, you just know that if it's your node who has validated and you know that your node is running the latest version, is running a very uncorrupted version that has a, that's, that follows properly the rules and has no modification of the rules like some big companies are trying to always do with Bitcoin because they just want to make more money. Well, then you know it's, it's, it's valid. And that's the whole point. It's just to know that you've received Bitcoins and if the Bitcoins you've received are real and are following the rules you believe in that there's only 21 million bitcoins right so but also it has some side effects because you're valid you're only connecting to your own server your own node either on your desktop or your dedicated soft server well you're not connecting to an external server uh, in, a, in a data center from a third-party company so because of that you're not giving anyone this data and usually this data uh, it ends up in the hands of uh, through some transactional deals, right? Let's say a wallet like, I don't know, Bread or I don't know, maybe um, uh, Coinomi which, or I don't know, Ledger. Maybe they have a deal with uh, chain analysis. And I'm just speculating here, but it makes all sense because how else are they making money? Um, and they have a deal that says, give us all your user data uh, each month and we'll pay you, uh, let's say, one cent per user. And they have one million users. So it's, it ends up being uh, quite a quite lucrative deal. And maybe they make $10,000 a month uh, off user data. And why should they say no, right? So because of that, uh, you, you're never sure what's happening with your data. And once it ends up in the hands of chain analysis well they collaborate with the u.s uh with the irs with the canadian revenue agency and the, that's the base case scenario so maybe you, you you're getting harassed to to pay each cent of tax and, and you're getting surveyed by some governments but still some relatively uh legitimate governments but maybe you live in saudi arabia and and that data that they send with your ip address and the bitcoin transactions you made well maybe that just killed you in, in saudi arabia because that's exactly what happens uh in in those kinds of countries and that's exactly the type of deal and purpose that these companies help achieve and if you don't believe me just check neutrino the company that was acquired by coinbase and later the founding team got fired because they had a history of collaborating with Saudi Arabia to kill dissidents ultimately. So, uh, and first of all, first, uh, the third point is you have to keep your operations censorship resistance. So sometimes you might see server is down, can't process transaction, try again later. You see it on a website, you see it on a, but how can you see that on your Bitcoin wallet? Like I was at a, uh, at a, client's house and we're moving him from mycelium to uh, an electrum and a bitcoin node 
and he couldn't move the coins out of my ceiling because it said server is down. Like it's my ceiling has more than one million users, and it's like one of the biggest mobile wallets. But still, they still have server is down when Bitcoin isn't supposed to be decentralized and uh, censorship resistant. What happened? So that's why you should run a node. And you can read more about this on our blog once again. And we have a talk dedicated on that on our YouTube channel. So Bitcoin Core, it's the full Bitcoin implementation. So if you want to run a node, you, you have different options, but I'm not going to talk about them because they're either incomplete, they're not maintained by the best developers as Bitcoin Core is, or they're simply not verified by many users. Bitcoin High has so many downloads or millions of downloads, and it has many people looking at the code, making sure that there's no bugs introduced. And once you look at the real network, and I can show you that uh, uh, a bit later if you want, it shows that around 96% of the Bitcoin nodes are Bitcoin Core clients. So it's definitely... Uh, the when it comes to running a node. So you can use it in a GUI version, graphical user interface, which I'm going to show, but you can also do it on the command line, just uh, some commands. And if it's, it's usually often used as a server to connect your wallet, right? Because at the end of the day, Bitcoin Core is a wallet too. You wouldn't have to use Electrum, but Bitcoin Core is more technical. It's more, ex it has less, uh, let's say, vanity features. So it has the core features but it has less the application level features that Electrum has and all other wallets have. So it's usually used as a server. All what Bitcoin Core proposes mostly, it's the loading the blocks, the lo which contain the transactions and validating every signature, every cryptographic piece and mathematical function uh, without skipping one and making sure that they're all uh, they all fill together one with the other because uh, because Bitcoin is a blockchain like other cryptocurrencies and, and blockchain projects, every piece of data is linked to the other pieces of data through the header cryptographic hashes. Uh, so running a node just means validating that it's all authentic and there's nobody trying to cheat, not a miner, not a, someone propagating a transaction uh, or other nodes that you, you make sure that it's all authentic. So it's maintained by the best Bitcoin developers. As you can see on the picture here, there's a few lizards and we like to make fun and, and just say jokes that uh, folks working on Blockstream are lizards or are reptilians or uh, actually it came around the time when the Bitcoin Cash people started to get together on Reddit and start some crazy conspiracy theories. Well, obviously, uh, we just know they're just dedicated people and uh, very uh, ethic uh, followers. So because they don't let nobody buy this. So that's an, another very important piece of mind is like, you know, there will always be some centralization points in everything. Bitcoin is not fully decentralized. The network of nodes is fully decentralized because anybody can just make sure that everything that is happening follows the rules and the cryptographical and mathematical rules, right? However, it will all, there will always be a, a group of experts that understand better the software components, the cryptographic uh, techniques. Uh, I don't understand everything. I haven't read every line of code. However, there's some guys that have read every line of code. So that will always exist, the, the, an elite that is expert. However, it's important that they, they remain, uh, they follow some moral principles that we all agree with. What happens if they're corrupt? And they sell control of Bitcoin to a company that pays them a lot of money. Well, then we just lost everything and Bitcoin will becomes corrupt uh, in, in that sense. So we're very lucky to have in Bitcoin not only the, the most qualified people that other blockchains and altcoins could, couldn't even dream of. Not only that, but we're also very happy to have very people that follow very important moral principles such as uh, software, software and Bitcoin security requirements, but also like not selling access to modification of the Bitcoin uh, protocol and implementation to companies, uh, not introducing uh, updates. And a lot of people get mad about this. They're like, ah, Bitcoin doesn't innovate. Well, yes, that's exactly the point. Because when you innovate, you make changes, you make updates. And when you make changes, 
it requires centralization. Someone has to introduce the changes. They could try to introduce the changes, but they don't want to because it shows, it just gives them more power and it just defeats the whole purpose. However, other cryptocurrencies don't follow these principles and you might all guess what my opinions are on that. So I'm gonna do a Bitcoin Core demo uh, very quickly. So here's Bitcoin Core. It, uh, it's, it's a wallet, like I said earlier, you can send, you can receive uh, funds, Bitcoins, but you, can, you also have some more settings. So let's say here, uh, no, I'm gonna go on something else first. Here I go on the network traffic. You see here is an analysis of the communication that is happening between my node and other peers on the network. So you see uh, that I've received 13 megabytes in the last 30 minutes and I've sent five megabytes of data. I can check what has happened in the last hour and a half and it's probably more, it's taking time to Oh, it seems, uh, ah, yeah, because I, I just turned it on a couple minutes before the presentation, so it doesn't show all the history. But if I was running it for days, I could analyze my traffic. Here are all the peers I'm connected to. So these are all the other Bitcoin nodes that are feeding me the data. And I'm not trusting them because I'm validating everything, like I said. But this is still the people with who I'm communicating on the Bitcoin network. And I have some information about them, right? These to three and four are only available over Tor because they, they have an onion address. Um, this is the, the level of uh, connection they have with me, the, the speed. And here I can see how much data was transferred and which even I can even see which uh, version of Bitcoin they're running. So console just means that I can do all the, all the Bitcoin um, uh, commands here so here I just got a new address I just click it's it's just command line right so you can have it here as well if I go and receive and I create new receiving address it's the same thing right so but there's many things you can do so you can do get blockchain info and this this is more important so you see we're at the block 636,317 um, we're following the main chain this is the level of difficulty the best block hash uh there's this is the size the information is taken on my disk so it's around 322 gigabytes of information um and there's a there's a lot right i can do get network info uh, and, I, and here i see who i'm connected to and what my address is even uh, in reality uh, i'm running through tor so this is my tor address um and i can do many other things right so uh, maybe if I do help, you can see all the type of things you can do. You can do. Uh, you can get some blockchain data to analyze or just to uh, to look at. You can do some. Uh, you can even mine with this. But however, I have no miners, so it's not gonna work. But back in the days, you could mine with this uh, software, and uh, you could get some bitcoins. Uh, but nowadays, forget about it. So. You can do some, I can control the peers I have. Let's say I wanna I want to connect to uh, my friend Tristan's node and I just put his address here and I say add node and I connect with him, right? Because I, I, I just, I don't know, I just wanna send him, uh, I, I wanna make sure that people I'm connecting to are not like uh, analyzing my communications and my data, right? So I can, I can do that as well to select who I connect to. Um, I can ban, there's some banning functions as well. Like if, if somebody's trying to like, it's just sending you a bunch of data that is useless and it's like not legitimate and you just validated and you're like, wow, why is this person sending me this data? Well, it just automatically blocks him, uh, from your connections because they're, they're just trying to, to do some weird stuff with you. So, uh, there's, well, so, so you can see there's a lot of functions you can do here. Basically all functions in Bitcoin. Moat is saying, uh, uh, there's a hardware wallet integration. You can do PSBT, uh, you can do coin control, everything, everything you can do here. Uh, so that's pretty much it about Bitcoin Core. What I'm interested in is how do I link Electrum to Bitcoin Core so that when I use Electrum and, and I'm using a better user experience, I 
don't I follow the, the principles of running a node that I mentioned here. So this brings me to the next slide. So here's a, a presentation of the architecture that we're trying to that we're using when using Electron Wallet. So here's the user uh, in the first image, obviously, and it, he goes on his desktop, uh, or, and then the user uh, launched Electron Wallet like I did. And this is the always user side or the client side. And you see a line here and we go on the other side and this is the server side. So by default, it's a third party uh, that's feeding me, that's running the Electrum server that the Electrum wallet is connecting to uh, through an API. And then it's connecting, the Electrum server is connected to Bitcoin Core. So by default, Electrum server and Bitcoin Core are running on a third party server that I have no control over, that's analyzing my data, and that it's telling me, you have this amount of Bitcoins and I'm just trusting without validation. Uh, and they can also shut down the service, right? But this server side can become a user's uh, run server side. So, and that's what I'm going to present now with the Electrum server. So when it comes to Electrum options, you can run, uh, well, you have many options, but you have two categories, let's say. You can run a full Electrum server, which is uh, an enterprise ready, Electrum server, or you can run a partial Electrum server, which is just for, let's say, yourself and, and yourself only. And what the difference is, is that an electro, a full Electrum server or an enterprise Electrum server has um, an index. And an index just means an, a database of all the transactions uh, listed in a, in a way, in a simpler way. So I'm going to explain myself. So when I go on Bitcoin, I have, uh, and, and you saw that I have 322 gigs of data. So I already have the database with all the information. Yes, but however, I have the database in a format that's not very easy to read. What is that format? It's basically blocks uh, per block. So let's say I do... Um, get best block hash which gives me the latest block this is just the latest piece of information uh, that was added to the bitcoin network and then i do get block um, and i uh, i get the block so i just did get the block and here you see there's a lot of data that came out and this is the the block that just happened has one confirmation because it's, it's the latest block uh, this is its, its size, this is its height, and these are all the transactions. Um, and it doesn't give me all the information per transaction uh, because it has, it's kind of a compressed format, but I could then get, uh, get transaction information for each transaction. So you see that it's all listed by block. And because it's all listed by block, uh, and let's say I want to. I'm, I'm I'm looking up an address on my Electrum wallet. Well, it's it has to check every block if there's an ad, if there's transaction related to that address, and that just takes a lot of time. Um, however, an Electrum enterprise ready server just gives you a database that lists transactions per address. So let's say I'm looking up this address. It just goes to, uh, let's say, line uh, 157,000, uh, and boom, this, this address has these three transactions. And so it's, it's very quick to answer because it's, it's already displayed in the format uh, that makes the Electrum wallet uh, lookup of transactions very quick and very easy. Uh, so this is an Electrum enterprise server. A partial Electrum server will look up block by block whether you have a transaction in there. So every time you, uh, you use a partial Electrum server, and usually you just use it once. You set up your wallet, you put the, the master public key that you want to watch, or maybe you want to watch many because you're using multisig, and then it just do, does a scan of blocks to look up in the blocks if your transactions are. And this can take like 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, three hours, depending how far are you looking into. Are you just, did you make your first transaction one year ago and you just want to look up for one year ago? Uh, if you're just starting and you have no funds in Bitcoin yet, well, you don't have to do a scan because there's, it's sure there's nothing before that was that had happened on your address because you just created your address. But if let's say I receive, I have funds, I have a wallet with funds since 2016. 
Well, when I run either EPS or, or BWT, the partial electron servers, well, I just say we scan since January 2017. And then it will just scan every block since then to now to make sure that to, to list all the transactions that I have. So the difference also is that when you're running a full Electrum server or an enterprise ready server, it will take some time to create that initial database. And it will also take some data space. So uh, it's around 40, it depends on the, on the version, but it's around 40 gigs uh, on Electrum X, Electress, the, the first and the second. And the third, it's around uh, 400, 500 gigs of data. And the reason why the third one, the Electress Explorer, is much bigger it's because you can also run a self-hosted web explorer basically blockstream.info you can run your own version at home uh, with the third electrum server and you can also connect that server to to your electrum wallet and to your node so it's like the perfect combination if you want to self-host a lot of stuff but it's very heavy you, you have to usually have to a very good desktop a lot of space or a dedicated machine for that i'm going to go with partial electrum for today's presentation um, so I'm well first of all I'm just gonna show you Explorer what it looks like if you want to run that so you go in elect blockstream.info and here is uh, basically the, the the Explorer that you could have if you run uh, Explorer as an electron server you would also get this website connected to your own node not connected to blockstreams node and it runs self-hosted so nobody knows that you're looking up your transactions uh, on your on your explorer right so i think it's pretty cool uh they just launched like the the uh mainnet uh, production ready version uh open source of this so um, i think i'm gonna download it in a couple of days or so but for now we're gonna talk about bwt so bwt just came out a couple weeks ago it's actually pretty cool because it has um many it, it has many things so uh first of all it's available inside the electrum wallet uh however there's some limitations to that if let's say i go on plugins i can select it here bwt uh but i'm not going to use that today because there's some limitations to that uh however this meme is appropriate because uh yo dog i heard you like them electrum servers so i put an electrum server in your electrum wallet uh, so the developer, Shizak, very good developer, uh, did this. But BWT is interesting because it's similar as EPS, Electron Personal Server, but it's much simpler in my opinion. Um, it's it's quicker. Uh, it's a little bit more, well, it's it's as secure, I'd say. Uh, maybe because it's written in Rust, it's, it's a little bit more secure. And But it's also the, the format, how it's available. First of all, like you just saw, it's one click on uh, to get it as a plugin. Well, you still have to install some things, but you just go on the interface and you click uh, BWT and it will run the BWT server. And if you're running your Bitcoin node, it will just all connect automatically. However, this only works on uh, not hot wallets. So if let's say I'm running a hardware wallet, uh, wallet with a hardware wallet, or if I'm running a cold wallet with an XPUB, then I can use the Electron plugin right now very easily. But because it's like new, they don't want to make you, uh, they don't want to make it available for hot wallets yet. However, running a server of BWT is simpler than e EPS, and that's what I'm going to do today. And plus, there's also uh, a REST API server, so uh, application programming interface uh, of HTTP that uh, allows you to uh, communicate with this BWT server. So let's say I'm making a web application and I want to have a Bitcoin backend. You know, I usually recommend CypherNode, but BWT is an alternative to developing Bitcoin app web applications or just client-side applications, mobile, back, uh, desktop, or web, right? But for today, we're just going to install it. And I already have it installed, but I'm just going to show you uh what happens so here let's say this is for a linux machine uh you you can also run it on windows uh although there's some modifications to do it, you'd have to look up here uh how to do it it's 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 quite straightforward so here let's say this command would just download it for me um 
let's see. I go, I go, I click here. Uh, let me create another. I'll go here. Okay, so I'm here. Um, and I just run this, this downloads it. So you see here that in red, I just download uh, a zipped file or just a, an encrypted file um, and with, with the software. And now I'm gonna verify the signature. First, I'm gonna download the signature. So I'm downloading the signature of Shezek, the developer who made this. And it says uh, processed and then uh, I'm gonna validate that the software that I just download in red corresponds to the key that I just download. And in a better way, I wouldn't download the key from GitHub like I just did. I would get it from uh, a presentation of the developer. So I'm really sure it's him. Because now in a worst case scenario, someone could have hacked GitHub, changed that. I don't think it happened, but it's very unlikely, but uh, we never know. So here I verify, this says uh, good signature from Nadav V Shazak. So this says it's appropriate. However, it's not fully perfect, like I mentioned. Uh, it's better if you get it from him uh, personally, physically. So now I, I'm gonna just uh, unzip it or decrypt it. And it's, it's ready. I can just go on, um, First, I have to go on the folder that you see it's available right here. Okay, so I'm on the folder and I can just run it. Uh, what if I just try to run it? It says, please provide at least one XPUB to track. Okay, so let's say I go here and I'm going to shut down this because I'm running in another window. So you see, did you see that this turned red? when I shut down my other BWT server because there's nothing connecting to my Electrum wallet anymore because I just shut down my Electrum server or my BWT server. So uh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go on wallet, I'll get the XPUB, I copy it with this button right here and then I go here and I do BWT, I do XPUB um, like this and I add it but I want to do I don't want to rescan because I just created this wallet and it's going to rescan by default so that there's no rescan I'll have to do something else uh, let me just check yes all you have to do is after the xpub you just do double point and you just write none and there's no scan and that's it it says the electrum rpc server is running on my local address with this port and I also have an http rest api ser server running and I go in my Electrum wallet and now it's green. So it, it connected to it because I, I just ran it, right? But let's say I'm, I'm gonna play around with it. I just, I'm gonna turn it off. You see it's back red because there, there's no connection. And how did it connect to my Bitcoin node? Well, just because my Bitcoin node is running on the same machine, it will just detect it very easily. Um, and, and it's just like you see here uh, in this line, right here in the, in the terminal, you see connected to Satoshi, uh, 0 0.19 on main protocol version and you, you see that it's connected to my uh, my Bitcoin node. So that's it. That's all you have to do to run an Electrum server that connects to your Bitcoin node and to your Electrum wallet. So this is a lot and if you want to have it very simply but you still want to hold some Bitcoin securely, well you can just call us verify we have two packages available that will basically give you all the hardware tools that you need. You, uh, with 1400 US dollars, you can have three cold card hardware wallets, which are basically the most secure uh, models available on the market. You can have a dedicated hardware server to run your own Bitcoin node and your own Electrum server as well. And we can put you uh, other stuff in it like Lightning and even some CoinJoy software for extra privacy. Everything that you need on a server side server, Bitcoin server uh, can be included there. So uh, then we have a three hour workshops that we show you how to use all the material and we can even construct a personalized key scheme for you. Let's say you have one house here, uh, work here, uh, summer house, another place. We, we propose to you a plan so that you're protected against many adversaries. So you're protected against theft, uh, against loss, against inundation, 
against uh, kidnapping. Uh, because if we're talking some big amounts, in my, uh, if uh, we've talked to some people holding million dollars worth of Bitcoin, you have to consider you getting kidnapped so that uh, the, the the criminals in, in the situation they 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 are very they can be baited, very motivated to get uh, hundred thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin or a million dollars worth of Bitcoin. And it's important also to think that Bitcoin value changes a lot. Uh, and I've seen some people let's say having. Uh, one five thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin when it was uh, two hundred dollars, and they they said, yeah, it's okay, it's just five thousand dollars. I don't care. I can hold it on my phone, right? But then Bitcoin went up twenty times, and now they were they were having one hundred thousand dollars. So it's not the same thing anymore. Uh, and and because of that, uh, it's important to think about these things uh, as soon as possible. So. We have a second package, which is a little bit more pricey, to 2,125 USD. Uh, and but on top of what we offered you before, we offered you also a Bitcoin inheritance plan. So that and you can also put us uh, a lot of clients put our, our name and our reference in their uh, inheritance plan that they give to their notary. So in case something happens, we can processes uh, because a lot of time the designated heroes won't be very familiar with uh, all the technical uh, details uh, but also we do two b annual follow-ups to make sure that everything is updated software wise if there's some bugs uh, we fix them if there's some uh, any issues we we just uh, help or any questions also or new situations arise all the time right new funds come in uh, or there's this new technology that a, the client the user wants to try we can maybe switch to that uh, and we also offer three metal seed backups for this and the three seed metal backups basically are just instead of writing your words in piece of papers and your dog eating them like it has happened to many people i know or your water entering your house through inundation or a fire or whatever any type of disaster because we're talking about disaster here right disaster protection uh, well tree metal seed backups helps you with that uh adversary or or situation so here are my reference and i'll i'll share the slides in just one second because i'm i'm, I'm almost done talking uh so that you can follow all the links that i mentioned uh but you can also go on our, on our blog and our YouTube and you'll find most information there, but there's some extra GitHub links uh, that I'd like to share with you. So uh, you can all follow us on verify.io or verifyptc on Twitter, and you can contact me at gustavo at verify.io. Any question, any inquiry, uh, don't hesitate. I'm always very open to answer questions and to help out. And well, for now, you can ask your questions, your, give your comments or uh, any type of uh, discussion you want to start, we're, we're here for that right now. So uh, I'll mute myself and anybody who wants to jump in, don't hesitate. Thank you. So I already see a question that was written a couple minutes ago. Uh, the question comes from Austrian boy, 160. It says, uh, he says, have any Montrealers who use the Bitcoin Core Nut wallet ever been hacked? So, actually, has anybody used the Bitcoin Core wallet ever been hacked because of a software bug in Bitcoin Core? Uh, not since 2010. So, in the early days, there was a lot of issues when P Bitcoin wasn't worth anything. Ever since Bitcoin Core, uh, there's been no uh, issues regarding Bitcoin Core security that has affected users uh, in a public manner, right? Everything is always possible. Uh, whether some folks have uh, ha have practice, have had bad security practices, is also it's another question. It's if let's say I use Bitcoin Core, but I write uh, I, I write my private key in uh, my Google Drive, and my password is my name. Well, obviously, uh, I, I'm very hackable, right? Someone can just log in into my Google Drive, get my private key, and that's it. That's all you need to hack me. So it, it really depends on that. But if you follow the right uh, backing up of keys and, uh, let's say, uh, software principles as well, because you could also download the, a malicious version of Bitcoin Core if you go on the wrong website or you don't validate the signatures, 
well, that can be issues as well. But if you follow the good principles uh, and you use the software appropriately, the software hasn't been corrupted since uh, almost 10 years already. I'm going to look up in the chat if other things got said. Mm -hmm. No, I think that was it. Well, David Rowley answered. He says, boy, anyone could be hacked regardless of anyone use of any t one tool or servers. Um, and he says, verify you provide a lot of excellent information. Thank you. So thank you, David, for assisting to our meetups constantly. You're, you're a very important uh, user for us. And you're absolutely right. Anybody can get hacked. It, it just depends on how you implement your security practices. And that's why it's not about one tool. The, the tools that I presented are the best ones available. But it's still up to you to make the other part of the, of the road to make sure that you have full, uh, the, the best security that Bitcoin can provide. And never forget that Verify is always here to help you with that. Does anybody else have any other question? Uh, okay, uh, Boris asks, do you prefer Raspberry Blitz or my Node BTC? Very good question. So it really depends. Um, first of all, it depends on what you're looking for, how technical you are. And very technical, Raspberry Blitz is very interesting because uh, it has some extra things that uh, my Node doesn't have regarding Lightning and regarding uh, join market. Uh, and it's also, it also has everything available free. But that's for technical people. For everyone, I recommend my note for sure. My note is as simple as um, loading up an image of uh, an, an operating system Linux distribution on a micro SD and inserting that micro SD in a Raspberry Pi plugging in the Raspberry Pi with a uh, power and a uh, hard drive, and that's it. That's It's as simple as that. And you go on the web interface, and you click on deploy Bitcoin node, deploy Lightning node. It's very good, like my node. However, my node makes you pay for premium features, such as if you want some extra privacy and you want to use store so that your IP address is not compromised, well, they make you pay for that, or you can write your own Python scripts as well, right? Uh, but if you know you're not a coder, well, they make you pay for that, or they, they and they make you pay for like easy updates. Uh, Raspberry Blitz doesn't make you pay for anything, but uh, unless you want the the, the hardware prebuilt, but it's uh, it's quite uh, it's quite harder to use. So I I, I recommend my node. Um, but also, if you want, uh, we we verify we can we can also leverage we also leverage my node to offer to our clients like uh, custom versions of my node uh, with the exact hardware that they want because my node on their website they allow you to order some hardware, but it's very basic hardware, uh, and I've heard stories about not uh, redundancy failing or just hard drives. Uh, fell after after a couple of days, right? Or a couple of months, excuse me. Our SSDs are are, are, are better, particularly NVMe SSDs. Uh, dual systems are better also as well. Like EMCs instead of micro SDs are also better, last longer. Things like that, uh, Verify can help with. The lack of RAID is a problem. That's a good point. Particularly for Lightning, the lack of RAID is a problem because there's no backing up in Lightning. So, or there's not full backup on Lightning. So uh, if you have an issue with back, if with your machine and it goes off uh, because your disk fails, and like you said, you have no RAID, and then you try to put back on your Lightning wallet, you might put it back on on the network with, uh, with let's, how do I put this very simply? with an unupdated state that will make the network, the Lightning Network think that you're trying to cheat, that you're trying to reverse a transaction that happened on the Lightning Network. And because of that, you can lose a lot of funds on the Lightning Network. So RAID is very important, but if you want RAID, you can use Noddle. Noddle.it offers RAID, uh, which means uh, a dual uh, redundant system of uh, uh, hard drives, two, two SSDs. However, 
not all sells their notes for 900 US dollars, which are very expensive. But once again, like I said, Verify can help you with making custom hardware uh, notes. Uh, we've, we've made it for many clients, so don't hesitate. Uh, previous state and lose funds. Yes, exactly, Boris. Losing funds on Lightning is, is kind of an issue. Anybody has a question uh, regarding anything else? Or uh, uh, want to continue a discussion on, on this, whatever? Uh, I have a question. I would like to know when uh, the, the Bitcoin meetups in the real life are, are coming back. Oh, well, uh, you're, you're one to ask that question, right? So uh, uh, it, it depends. I guess uh, we've, we've seen from the Kerry government uh, uh, that uh, things are moving. So, uh, however, I don't think uh, I, I don't think this is going to be permitted until at least uh, mid-July. Uh, as from what I read so maybe we'll try for August but we'll see it all depends on the, the public situation uh, with the regarding the government but also regarding uh, what the community wants as well right uh, it's, it's important so we'll see once uh, things get settled with the government and the community which all of you guys can uh, gives us the feedback that this this is what we should do now well then maybe we can have a meetup in august or september uh but uh, on on the on the two points that i mentioned the government but also community feedback so guys don't be shy you can always give us your feedback and uh and we'll very we'll be very responsive to that Well, since you wanted the feedback, uh, let me just tell you that uh, we should be uh, going to meet uh, tomorrow and have some beers. And if uh, people uh, are not feeling safe, they can stay at home, you know. Uh, uh, it's their choice, you know. They can come and wear their masks also. But uh, I think we should get on with life because uh, it's getting a little insane. And, uh, you know, I, I think like at some point we we're supposed to go for like an all-you-can-eat buffet. And uh, the other day, it's funny because I was passing in front of that place uh, that I was considering going to. And I asked the guys, are you guys going to be reopening this week? Because uh, some of the terraces on St. Dennis were opening. Uh, and uh, the guy was, uh, no, no, uh, we still don't feel it's safe for our employees and our customers, you know. So, and, and, but then there were other guys, like terraces opening, you know. So it's kind of like, uh, it's very strange what's going on right now. And uh, I think us as Bitcoiners, you know, we, we should be uh, leading the path with this and like, uh, getting on with our lives uh, sooner rather than later, I hope. <laughs> That's it. Well, uh, I kind of agree, Jose. Huh? As, as you probably know my opinion on this as well, I won't get into this too much. But uh, at the end of the day, like you said, it's, it's, it's very personal. And, and I think we can have that. Like we can have uh, uh, smaller settings at first where people, uh, where there's, uh, people come with masks as they want, where the, there's uh, there's uh, uh, some purel so people can wash their hands uh, yeah sure or we can have maybe smaller settings and then we just go bigger and bigger settings uh, because we, we we had meetups with 150 people uh, back in January so uh, we're definitely not getting to that uh, first right we're definitely going small by, by small but but yes I, I'm very open to all ideas so uh, uh, if it's drinks uh, maybe for uh, is there some Bitcoin uh, holiday coming up soon um well there's uasf well that's kind of in like a month so i i think we can definitely say that we can make like at least a small uh drinks thing uh for uasf for the first of august i think we can we can say that that's pretty safe like uh 10 15 20 people right uh with uh, the appropriate measures in a, in a public space maybe outdoors right i think that would make sense uh yes but maybe even earlier We'll, we'll see. Anybody got to want to jump in on that uh, topic or another one? So um, I think we're we're then uh, pretty over if nobody wants to jump in. So, uh, um, well, I'm just going to send, I'm going to just share the link very fast. Uh, 
well, for, for the slides, but we also share it later, but I'm, I'm going to do that uh, right now, might as well. So, uh, just shouldn't be long. Okay, so uh, here's the link for those who want to get to the slides. Uh, I just sent it through the chat. Uh, uh, David says, I sent you an email message about holding real life meetups in a Swiss bank office. Wow, that's really cool, David. Uh, I'll read your email right after this talk and, and I'll respond. Uh, sounds like an interesting idea. I'm uh, looking forward to hearing more on that. So yeah, uh, maybe an, uh, I think an outdoors thing uh, could be cool in a, in a couple of weeks. Uh, and in July or uh, definitely August, maybe July. We'll, we'll see. Uh, we already know Jose uh, is up for it. We already know I'm up for it. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens from that. So thank you everyone for assisting today. Like I said earlier, this is going to be on YouTube. And you can always come to me for questions uh, at Gustavo at Verify.io or Gustavo G uh, underscore Flores on Twitter. Uh, thank you and have a good evening and a good weekend. Bye.